Hi, I'm John Mortensen. Today I'm going to show you the Auto Slide Automatic Sliding Glass Door Opener. This is a motorized unit that you connect to your existing sliding glass door and it opens and closes the door for you. This is great for people with mobility issues, maybe in a wheelchair or have some other problem that makes it difficult to open the sliding glass door. Uh, but we also have uh, various pet triggers which will open this up for your pets. And when it opens up for the pets, it only opens partway. When it opens up for the people, it opens the whole way. So it's pretty cool in that respect, too. Uh, all right, so we've chosen a white one here. It does come in black, which would look better with this bronze door, but we wanted it to stand out so you could see what was going on. Uh, the unit itself runs off of 110 volt power. So hopefully you've got an outlet nearby. If not, you might need to run an extension cord. Um, 99 times out of 100, instead of being mounted there on the floor, this unit's gonna be mounted up here. The problem with this particular door is this frame is very short on the top and there just wasn't enough room to, to mount this long uh, gear that drives the door back and forth and have it mesh up with the motor on this uh, short little thing. So it's unfortunate, but 99 times out of 100, it's gonna go up here. Also, there's usually a shelf or a little open space here on the inside. If for some reason they biased your door to the inside of the house and the, and the available area was on the outside, the auto slide can be mounted on the outside of the door. It's completely weather tight, no issues there. All right, so uh, the way it works is you have a little pinion gear and then the long rack gear and it will open the door all the way and then close it back slowly, okay? Um, with the door, with any, there's there's very various different combinations of this door on our website. With any of the combinations, you're gonna get two of these push buttons. These push buttons are wireless. They're peel and stick, so you can just stick them on a wall or wherever you like on a table. And when you hit the button, there goes the door. Now, I said it closes back slowly, but if something should get in the way, I'll show you what happens and uh, it'll, it'll back up. Now, I can't tell you how much force was used on there, but <laughs> on my foot, but I barely felt it. So this is not going to squash you or your dog or your baby. <laughs> it's very safe in that respect. So, so it's, uh, it's, it's not gonna be hazardous. Uh, okay, now let's talk about triggering mechanisms. We'll do the people triggering mechanisms first, and then we'll do the pet stuff afterwards because that's got a more limited audience. So for people, you've got the uh, the push buttons. Then there's also a, uh, a key fob remote, which is a separately sold item. You just click the button and it opens the door. It's kind of like one of these on a key fob. Uh, it doesn't look like that, though. It looks like a more normal thing. Uh, the last one is the RFID tag. Now the RFID tag is a little simple tag uh, with the keychain thing, and you can put this on your keychain, and then you can set the distance. When you come within a particular distance, uh, it's three, six, or ten feet. The door will automatically open. It'll just sense the uh, the key, and that's what this thing is for. So I've got a key that's kind of uh, out of camera here. In fact, here I'll give you a little bit of a close up of the key. So that's it. This just hooks onto your key ring. Now this one's set up for pets. So when I get it within range, that blue LED on there is going to turn red, and then the door is going to open partway. Now, if you're using this method, as long as you're within range, the door won't close. When you get the key out of range, see about there, then the door closes slowly again. Also, the, uh, the delay um, on this, if you open this up, this delay where it's at full open is adjustable as well. So you can have it stay open for 30 seconds or this one set for maybe two or three seconds. Uh, so there you go. Uh, okay, security. Now, if you're using this for mobility purposes, if you're in a wheelchair, or one of those types of situations, or you just uh, wanna have one of these really, um, you can make this secure. They have what they call an iLock motor. So the motor has a, has a gear that goes around in it and there's actually a pin that will stick into the side of the gear that will prevent it from turning. And that is a very secure lock um, and, and that works with the, the key fob remotes 
or they have an external 10 digit keypad, which you can mount on a wall, and then somebody would type in the correct code and then it would open the door. Uh, it does not work with these. I mean, you can stick one of these outside, but if anybody hits the, hits the button, it's gonna unlock the lock and open the door. So you really don't wanna use these on the outside of the door with the iLock. Um, we don't recommend the iLock for the pet setups at all, um, none of them. Because if you have a dog with any of the various um, trigger types, which we'll mention in a second, and your dog runs up to the door, whichever trigger they've got is going to open the door and then the, the burglar or thief is gonna be able to walk right in. So if you're using this for dogs, you're basically relying on your dogs for security. Okay, that's it for this part. I'm gonna move the camera and get some pictures, some close-ups of the unit itself so you can see how it works. And then we'll talk about the uh, pet triggering mechanisms. Okay, let's take a look at the unit itself. The uh, here, so you can see that's in pet mode over there. See a little pause on that. Anyway, uh, let's take a look at the unit itself. Uh, it this cover does pop off pretty easily. Let me get in there and remove that. And essentially, you have uh, the brain of the thing, which uh, handles all the different sensors and all that and uh, tells the thing how far to open. And then you've got the motor itself. The motor has a small black gear, which you can't see behind here. And that drives this long white gear, which is bolted to the sliding glass door. And again, if you had a black one, you get a long black gear, so that wouldn't be so obvious. But I was trying to do it so that there was a little contrast there so you could see what was going on. Uh, the motor itself will produce 12 pounds of pull. That's sufficient for most sliding glass doors. Um, there is a way to test and make sure that it's going to be strong enough, which is uh, a Velcro tool. This thing is basically just a Velcro strap with a handle on it, and you just wrap it around your door handle, uh, open and close the door three times. If you can do that without the strap coming undone, then you're good to go. If you happen to like fishing and have a fish scale, you can do it that way too. Just, uh, just put your fish scale on the handle and pull. And if it's uh, less, 12 pounds or less, then you should be all right. For people with great big doors, you know, maybe in Florida or uh, in the desert somewhere, Palm Springs or Las Vegas, you might have an eight foot wide and eight foot tall sliding glass door or even bigger. Um, the standard motor will probably not be strong enough, but they have an elite motor, which will do up to 35 pounds. Now, I don't have a tool for that one, but um, that 35 pounds covers most sliding glass doors out there. So I believe that is it for the explanation here. I'm going to go back and show you the uh, pet trigger mechanisms. All right, let's talk about the different pet trigger mechanisms. Uh, there are three. And uh, let's see, the first one is infrared. So this is a heat sensor. And uh, this, there's two of them. There's one on the inside of the house and then the second one on the outside of the house. Now, internally, they do have a little sensor which you can aim. And it's also adjustable for sensitivity. Uh, the problems with the heat sensor are, um, well, the first thing is you've got to have one on the outside. Now, these things are powered by the actual auto slide unit itself. So there's a wire that goes up and around and down, and then it splits into a Y. And then you'll have one of those wires going to the sensor on the inside and one to the sensor on the outside. So you have to get that wire to the outside. You can't run it through the doorway. So what you need to do is drill a hole through the wall right next to the sliding glass door in order to get that wire through. It's not a real big deal to put to, to put a hole in a wall there, but a lot of people don't like it. So just be aware that if you do the infrared, you will be drilling a hole through the wall. Uh, it is aimable, as I showed you. Another issue with this is if you aim it for a Great Dane, to hit a Great Dane's torso at three foot away, you are not going to hit your Chihuahua. And I'm not sure that, that it will be able to read the Chihuahua's heat signature from as far away as it would need to be to hit at the same angle as the Great Dane. So basically, if you have a great big dog and a little tiny dog, this is probably not the best solution either. Uh, the last issue is if you have a south-facing sliding glass door. If your door faces south and is in the sunshine all day long, what will happen is the whole door will heat up. And once the whole door heats up, this thing will say, okay, there's, there's something there that wants to get in. It'll open it up 
And then just like when I was holding the key in front of the uh, sensor there, it will stay open until the heat goes away. So this thing's going to be open, you know, 10 inches or whatever <laughs> all day long. So that's not the best solution. Uh, if it's not a south, uh, south facing door, uh, then this can be less of a problem. If it's north facing door, you're pretty much in the clear. It's never going to be in the direct sunshine. Okay, uh, next up is the pressure mat. Now the pressure mat is a large mat that goes under a floor mat and then it basically has one of these on it. So you step on the floor mat and it's like hitting the button here. But again, you'll be you'll set it up for pet mode so it'll open part way. Now I have one, it's very sensitive so it's probably gonna go off as soon as I pick it up but we'll give it a shot here. Be very gentle with it. Okay, so see if I can open it up. You can see that it's a pretty big mat. And, um, uh, oh, there it goes. <laughs> you can see that when you're, when you're squeezing it enough, the little blue light comes on. So if I set it down here, there. Lights off, so now it should close up. So the pressure mats are great because you don't really have to train your dog to do anything. They just walk up to the door and it opens. Uh, there's there's really one downside to it, which is that it's not weather tight. So the little sender box has peel and stick tape and you can stick it to the wall just like you do this. But um, but if there's not a, a really significant overhang on the outside, then uh, it might get wet, in which case it won't work anymore. Also, because it is wireless and it has batteries, you'll have to replace those batteries just like you do these uh, these wall buttons. So um, keep that in mind. Uh, the latest and greatest is the RFID system. Comes in black or white here. And same with the keys. We've got white keys and black keys. And um, again, this can be used for people. You can put this on your keychain and then it'll just open the door for you all the way. Or it can be used for pets. You can't use it for both people and pets at the same time. So you got to pick one or the other. But as I showed you before, <clears throat> I've got this, uh, this keychain one here, which has the little, little extra bit, so you can just clip it to your key ring. And uh, when it gets into range, the door opens. It'll stay open as long as the key is in range. When the key gets out of range, then it closes again. Um, these things are great because it's not going to open for a raccoon that steps on the pressure mat or has enough body heat to, to open up the infrared. So it's good in that respect. It's not going to let every stray animal in the neighborhood into your house. The downsides to it are, well, there's, there's two. Um, one downside is the keys are not waterproof. So if you have a lab and a pond or a pool, <laughs> not, not the best choice. If they jump in there, it's going to ruin the key. Uh, the second thing is you can only program three keys at a time. So if you're one of these people with a menagerie of 10 dogs, no, it's not going to work either. You, you, you can only use it for up to three at a time. So, um, yeah, that's basically it. I think that's going to be the end of the video. If you have any questions or anything, you can give me a call at 866-377-3667. Uh, you can email to sales at petdoorstore.com. If you're on the website and you hit the chat button and somebody answers, I am that somebody. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And uh, yeah, thanks for taking the time to watch my video and I appreciate it.